Bolin Studio and this month I'm going to take you through a layout using the new red black extension papers and these are the designs that I'm going to be using on today's page. So these three full sheets and also this one with the lovely rose and the accent sheet, the accessory sheet. So I'll put this one to the side for the moment and I'm going to start with these three and I'm going to create a background with some uh, squares and rectangles of these three papers and this paper is going to be the very background. So I'm just going to trim the branding strips off to start. And this page is going to stay 12 by 12, that's going to be the background, and then I'm going to start to cut these two designs into some smaller blocks. That's what the back looks like. So here's where I'm going to start laying down the background and I've cut one piece that's a little bit narrower and taller and then one that's kind of shorter and wider. And the colored block's going to go in the middle and then these two that are just black on cream either side. So um, different prints but same color scheme and, and this one punch of red in the middle. And then I have a strip of the stripe and that's the the other side of this um, cream and black print. And what I'm going to do is create a border strip with this and I love using a, a border punch with stripes because you can punch the design and then lay it on top of the, another piece and the stripes will all match up and it just makes that scallop design almost like it's embossed or it's just an extra layer and it's a really subtle touch but I, I quite like it. So I'm going to use a scallop punch on one side of this border strip. With all the papers on this layout, I'm going to add a little bit of black ink to all the edges. And I'm just using Distress Ink in black soot, but you can use any black ink that you like, including the Jenny Bolin uh, ink pad, of course. Um, but I do like the, the look that you get from a little bit of black ink when there are so many different layers in the layout. Okay, I haven't glued anything down yet, but I am starting to see the layout come together. So I have this stripe section and I'm going to line that up with the line on the black pattern paper and these two blocks and then the colored block above it. But I want to add another border strip just to finish this kind of block at the bottom. But I want something very narrow, so I'm going to come to the accessory sheet and I'm going to use this... Um, the rule strip here and I'm just going to cut that into a narrow strip and put it at the bottom. So all the pieces I'm going to glue down to the background, there's the border strip at the very bottom and then I've cut this really narrow strip of the stripe paper just to break the two cream colored papers up, um, in the block and then green papers either side, the stripes with the scallop strip at the top, and then this block is going to go right over the top of all of those. So here's the background all ready to go, and to complete the layout, I have one 4x6 photo, and I'm going to start by cutting out this gorgeous giant rose, and I'm just going to do that with scissors. And if it's not perfect, that's okay, because it's going to get layered into the mix, and a little imperfection is just fine. So when it's all cut out, my rose looks like this, and I haven't gone in between the petals that are, or the leaves that are all locked in here, but I did go ahead and cut where there was uh, space to get in and, and cut around the leaves, and I left a bit of a, a cream background all the way around the whole design. I find it's just a little bit easier to leave the background, and I quite like the contrast that that gives once you put it on the background paper. So um, there's my rose ready to go and I love this rose then cut apart and layered together in a big stack but in this particular layout I'm going to keep it as a whole and um, the whole rose and I'm going to use this angle to frame my photo which is going to go here. And here's the picture I'm going to use which is a 4x6 print and this is where it's going to be placed. So I'm 
just going to cover up this tiny little corner of the photo with the rose and then that frames everything in and, and there'll be this paper with the red coming off one side and this paper with the red rose on the other side to frame the photo. So it's a little bit different than a photo mat that's exactly the same as the photo just all the way around and because this piece is not quite as wide as the picture. Now I do want to add a little bit of a frame to the photo with another color to give a bit of contrast but I'm not going to do it with paper, I'm going to use paint. So today I'm going to be using the gray weather vane Jenny Bolin for Ranger paint and I'm going to dilute it a little bit with some, um, this is just the pearl color of Glimmer Mist, but basically just anything you can even um, just literally water it down with water. Um, or you can dilute it a little bit. I just want it a little bit thinner than it comes in the bottle for the effect that I'm going to add. What I want to do before I move the photo, where I have it in the right place, is take my pencil and mark the corners. So I know where this photo is going to go and then I can move the photo and use the paint on the page. To dilute the paint, I've just added some of the paint to a teacup or you can use a paper plate or whatever will um, be happy for you to mix paint. And then just a few sprays of the Glimmer Mist and stir it around. And now it's an acrylic paint with a tiny little bit of pearl and it's a little bit runnier, more liquid than the thick acrylic. I love the, the thickness of the acrylic, but I also like um, this slightly thinner version for painting on a page. So I'm going to just take my paintbrush and now I'm looking for the corners that I marked. And my first brush will be just those, those corners. So this is pretty much the size of the photo. You can see it, it when it's thinned down it goes onto the paper really easily. Right, so I have one frame and then I'm going to go back and add a little bit more thickness to this so that there'll be a frame around the picture and I want the edges to be extended so that you get this kind of crosshatch effect on the corners rather than make it a square. I like this bit of a, a rougher look where it looks a bit more sketched with a paintbrush. And then I take my paintbrush one more time and go back to the corners and splash a little bit of paint. And I tend to pick one corner that I add way more paint than the other three. So that's what works there. And just let that dry for a minute and then I'll add my photo and my rose on top of the dried paint. I've adhered the photo right over the top of the paint and then I'm going to add the rose next. But I want to give the rose a little bit of dimension so I'm going to attach this with foam squares or pop dots just to bring it up off the page a little bit more. just want to overlap this corner and I want the petals or the leaves to frame that edge of the photo. And then the foam squares, the pop dots, will create that lovely um, shadow where the paper is raised up off the page. And then I'm going to use the new letter stickers for my title and that's going to go right on this straight line at the top. And what I'm going to do is start this word at the last letter and work backwards. 
and then on this side, because the title is going to go all the way across, on this side I'll start here and spell to the end, and that way any free space will be left at the edge and I won't fall off the page. For my journaling, I'm going to go back to the accessory sheet and cut out a few labels to layer on and, and have plenty of space for my writing. So I've used two labels for my writing and the longer label I've just placed it so it barely goes off the edge of the page and then just cut off the extra and written all my journaling on there and that's the layout almost finished and this is normally the stage where I really really want to put butterflies on things and I really do except um, I don't know how the proportion would work with the really big rows and maybe teeny tiny small butterflies this size so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay strong and I'm not gonna put butterflies on it but I am going to do something else so I'm pulled out some baker's twine and black embroidery floss um, and I really could have just used plain red embroidery floss as well but I didn't have any that was a good color match and I had this baker's twine and then I've pulled out three Jenny Bolin buttons so one in black one in red and one in cream and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to thread the buttons onto the string and I'm going to try to thread them through together. I'm going to place the buttons in the bottom corner of the photo so that it balances the other embellishment. There are really only two embellishments on the page, but because they are catty corner or diagonal in line with the photo, that means that the picture and the writing will always be um, where your eye goes in the middle of the page. And what I want to do, this end of the twine is going to tuck behind, so I just wanted to pull through enough to make sure it would go behind the page and then I'm going to cheat a little bit. These buttons aren't going to be sewn to the page because they're just threaded onto the string. I'm going to attach each one with a glue dot. And then this side I will turn the page over and secure that end before I go any further. And then all this extra length is going to wrap all the way around and come back under the buttons. And it looks like I've got enough to go one more time. And then I'll just take this last bit and wrap it around to the back. And then I tend to take a few little scraps of, of paper and adhere them over the top just to make sure that the thread will stay in place. And also so that you don't have any loose adhesive on the back that when you put it in your album would stick to another page. So here is my completed layout with lots of uh, texture from the twine and I love the, the shadows and the, the giant rows. So thank you for joining me this time um, for this layout tutorial and I hope you enjoy this month's kit and all the red and black Jenny Bowling goodness. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.